welcome. I'm glad you're here and I hope you experience the warmth and family that is IUCC. My name is Trisha Ains. Uh, my husband and I have been uh, members probably about 16 years with some time in between where we, we uh, moved out of state. And in all those years, we, uh, we visited other churches and we never found one that gave us quite the sense of family that we have here at IUCC. It would be hard for me to come up with a single event that is special to me because there have been so many. I think my favorite thing has always been to be in a group of people with a common project, a common goal. Sometimes that's been a task force and sometimes it's been a committee. Most recently it was the pastoral search committee. And I have just so enjoyed working with the people of this congregation. They are so smart and so dedicated and they are people of faith and they do what's right for their fellow man. And that was something that was always very important to me. And I've just enjoyed the sense of camaraderie. And I hope you do too. So it's been nice chatting with you. Uh, stand by, we, uh, we will be starting the service in just a moment.
Good morning. Welcome to Irvine United Congregational Church as we continue a celebration of Thanksgiving together. I'm your pastor, Pastor Sarah, and I'm glad that you've joined us, those of you who are in person and also watching online. Thank you for joining our proud, open and affirming, just peace, global missions, creation justice, progressive Christian congregation of the United Church of Christ. Here we seek to be a diverse, multicultural, multi-generational church, and it takes all of us to show up, to invite our friends, to extend the welcome for us to live into that vision together. If you are a visitor, we especially want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us. If you're watching online, thank you so much. We know you have so many opportunities, and we're glad that you chose to worship with us. We do have um, some visitor welcome um, information packets um, at the front at our welcome table. And if you're watching online, you can peruse our website to get to know us better and go to iucc.org slash visitor where you can tell us a little bit about yourself so we can reach out and welcome you properly. Those of you who are here, if you will see the red tablets there on the end of your, um, the red books at the end of your aisles, go ahead and sign in. But do me a favor, second service, if you can just draw a line right underneath the last person who signed in so that we know that you are here at the 11 o'clock service. That would be wonderful. You can pass that back and get to know the name of the person next to you. If you would like to follow along with our service, we'll lead you through it, but we also have the opportunity to download a bulletin. All you need to do is lift up your phone and hit this QR code right here. Joy Vanna White behind me will help you. Um, simply go to the website that comes up, click that, and you can then download the bulletin from there. Is that Jaime? I don't even know who that is. Keith? So many people. So many Vannas. If you have a challenge with hearing, we want you to be able to experience this service, and we do have listening devices available at the tech booth. Our incredible tech team, who is all volunteer-led back there, will help you with any listening devices, anything you need. They are here to assist, and um, we're so grateful to all of you. You might notice we're a little bit understaffed. Um, we have several jobs open and invite you to that, but we also want to thank you for your patience among us as we volunteer together. Speaking of volunteers, we've had quite a lot of them over the last week or so. We're doing a preschool refresh that is led by our bookkeeper, Heidi's husband, Mark. Paul Fike has been there day after day. Michael Wilcox joined several of us on Wednesday night for more scraping, and they've been there all weekend long. I want to invite you to pop in, stick your head in at the preschool, and look at the progress that has taken place in just over a week's time. It's very exciting. So we do have other volunteer positions available that don't require heavy labor. It's not even hard, guys. Was it hard? That was all right. <laughs> but um, I'm thankful to those of you who have reached out about helping out in the office. We're prioritizing those um, tasks so that we can actually take you up on the offers. Thank you. Um, any of our ministries are always looking for volunteers, so we thank you for that as well. We had such a lovely gathering of Thanksgiving this past Friday as we welcomed the synagogue back to worship with us. It was the first time since 2018 that we were able to worship in person here for Thanksgiving. And it was truly a powerful experience to sit side by side in a real interfaith setting with the synagogue and also the unified mosque that has met here for many years. They haven't been meeting since the pandemic, but they're going to try to return. And so it was just a real lovely return of dear friends as we gathered. I also want to commend all of you for your curiosity. The topic of the evening was everything you ever wanted to know about Judaism and Christianity, but were too afraid to ask. Well, there must have been a lot of fearful people because <laughs> We had so many questions that we couldn't answer them all in one evening. 
So we're hoping that we'll get back to those questions maybe next year, maybe we'll have another opportunity to do it in a different setting, but it was really a fun time, a powerful time, and a real appreciative time to lift up our thanks together. Um, I also want to lift up our gratitude to all of you. Last Sunday was the end of our pledge season, and so thank you. We blessed our pledges, and we're blessing those that are yet to come. If perhaps you have a pledge that hasn't made it in yet, we're still accepting those. The gratitude I share today comes not only from me personally, but from our fund development committee who has been working so hard so that all of us can be the change we wish to see in our world. So thank you for that. Um, this week, the office will be closed. So if you're looking for us, we won't be here. <laughs> Go ahead, you can send your emails in. We'll try to respond to those. Some of us might be doing a little bit of work throughout the week, but technically our office is closed. We'll be back next Sunday for the first Sunday of Advent. It's almost here. I can't believe it. So thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being part of this community. Thank you for being church, and thank you for doing church. Let us all come with a spirit of gratitude as we join together with one another and our God. Welcome. Morning, church. Let's all join together for our call to worship. We gather in God's sanctuary to give thanks. This can possibly God blesses us with gifts of love. Opportunities to see God in action. For all the blessings of our lives, we give thanks. Amen. Um. From your hymnal, which can be found next to you in your seat, we're going to be singing number 421, and those words go to 420, but it's a very um, familiar melody. And so you can look at 421, or you can also look up front, and the words will be on the screen. But I think you'll recognize the melody. Please stand in body or spirit.
guess what holiday we're celebrating this week? It's Thanksgiving! Yay! This is a time where we celebrate the harvest and blessings of the year. It's also a time to share a wonderful meal with delicious foods. My favorite thing to eat at Thanksgiving is probably stuffing, although I have a soft spot for all the delicious pies. I love pie. But anyway, um, what's your favorite thing to have at Thanksgiving? I do not eat turkey because I'm a vegetarian. And I forgot. <laughs> I like to eat pumpkin pie. I like macaroni and cheese. I like strawberries. I like blueberries. I like perfect pumpkin pie. Some of my favorite things to eat at Thanksgiving is like cupcakes or other food that's sweet. Or like cinnamon rolls. Um, I like to eat my dad's turkey, my dad's mac and cheese, and my mom's chocolate pie. Well, you guys make sure you save me a piece of pumpkin pie, since you guys know now how much I love pie. Boo. Anyway, back to it. Of course, Thanksgiving is about so much more than just food. Thanksgiving is about celebrating, you know, how grateful we are for the people in our lives, for celebrating the blessings and the memories we've shared with others, and of course, the experiences that have shaped us. I'm most grateful for this year, my friends and my family. I think this was a year where I really truly learned just the importance in having relationships with people and community and everyone. Uh, my IUCC family is the same. I love you all. Hi, choir, I love you. And all the kids in the choir, I love you all so much. I just cherish the relationships I have with people so much. And it's been a challenging time, but I'm so thankful. What are some things or maybe someone you're thankful for? Gobble, gobble. I'm grateful for my family, my friends, um, my um, toys, my dogs, I mean, my dogs, <laughs> animals, um, the world, um, 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 school. I thank you for what for mama and a guy. I think for my school and my friends. And George. <laughs> and George. And George. I'm grateful for my family and friends and my home and all my stuff. Keep it fresh. Happy Thanksgiving. It is not Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>
We are deeply saddened by the shooting at Colorado Springs Gay Nightclub. Let us have a moment with our silent prayers for all those who are affected by this tragedy. Let us pray in silence. Dear God, the power behind all that exists, the source of agape love, with your presence, fill us with your power and your love. Enable us to go out into the world making a difference. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, we pray in gratitude for so many blessings, including the Friday night Thanksgiving service shared jointly with the University Synagogue, that our church embraces progressive Christianity with each person deciding what to believe, being open to new truth, to God continuing to speak. We are grateful for our church leaders and pastor Sarah, taking our church into an uncertain future with a creative boldness. For members of our church who are activists, participating in programs that promote racial, economic, and social justice. We acknowledge that the heart and soul of the Christian faith is the love of God, the love of our neighbor, and the love of self. Help us, God, to know who is our neighbor in so many different settings and situations. God. Guide us in putting agape love into our actions involving family members, work associates, and friends. We pray in gratitude for those who have remarkable courage. Whether the courage of the gay man or trans person who decides to be the authentic person that they were meant to be when they come out for leaders in the civil rights movement facing fire hoses and attack dogs, and for present day workers and labor unions fighting for economic and social justice and decent working conditions and a living wage. For immigrants facing a draconian set of laws and very poor border enforcement. For parents with children of special needs for the young pregnant teenager who must decide whether or not to get an abortion, for veterans who fight in wars they didn't start, for those facing death, serious illnesses, and serious injuries, for those who must use tough love for family members and friends, for pastors who speak the truth, and all people who choose to be honest and transparent for all people facing difficult and challenging decisions. For the church, where everyone belongs, where every person finds a home, where there are no differences that divide us, rather help us have a better, richer community. Pray for those who have the courage to have interracial relationships. Above all, we pray that, pray that thanks for the love, the agape love that surrounds us in this church. Now, let us hold in our hearts and minds the names of those who appear on our screens, those who have asked for our prayers.
one more thing needs to be added to the things we are deeply thankful for, and that is our marvelous church music program. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing together as a family again from our hymnal, number 28 this time, and it's for the beauty of the earth. The words and music are on the same page. And we'll do verses 1, 2, and 3. Please stand and bow to your spirit. On this day of gratitude, we especially thank you for being here and thank you for being part of our community. May our thanksgiving extend beyond a season as we share our gratitude for God and for one another. We are glad you are a part of this intentionally progressive Christian community. And as we pass along the offering plates this morning, we give thanks for the generosity of, and commitment of people like you who sustain our church and ensure its longevity. You can also give online at iucc.org forward slash giving or by placing a gift in the offering boxes in the narthex. You may also send a check to 4915 Alton Parkway in Irvine 92604. And while you can fill your pledge cards online, there are also some printed available in the narthex. And you may place your 2023 pledge card in the offering plate. We will be blessing the pledges later in the service. This month, in addition to our church offering, we are also collecting for neighbors in need. An offering of the United Church of Christ that goes to help those in need this year, specifically focusing on economic justice. Please consider making a donation today. If writing a check or using Zelle, please uh, mention neighbors on the memo so we know to send it on.
Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we are thankful for your presence, your comfort, your challenge, your endless generosity, and your eternal love. We are grateful for friends and family and thankful that here in your church, friends become family. May we continue to lift up our gratitude and walk humbly with you as we seek justice and live love with one another and your world. Today's reading is taken from the book of Ephesians. Be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The German mystic Meister Eckhart is reported to have said, if the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. He was a 13th and 14th century theologian, philosopher, and mystic who continues to have an impact upon people of faith. A 20th and 21st somewhat philosopher and theologian and maybe mystic, Anne Lamott, said something similar. Okay, those of you who know her may realize she's not exactly of the same caliber as Meister Eckhart, but I love her. Her prayer goes something like this. Thanks. Which is short for... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I'm a big fan of Anne Lamott. So I thought I'd share some of her words appropriate for a time of Thanksgiving. She explains, Thanks is the short form of the original prayer I used to say in gratitude for any unexpected grace in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As I grew spiritually, the prayer became the more formal, Thank you. And now, from the wrinkly peaks of maturity, it is simply thanks. Now, as then, most of the time for me, gratitude is a rush of relief that I dodged a bullet. The highway patrol guy didn't notice me speed by. Or the dog didn't get hit by someone else speeding by. Or, oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you. But it was all a dream. My child didn't drown. I didn't pick up a drink or appear on Oprah in my underpants with my dreadlocks dripping off my head. These are all DEFCON 1 moments of relief and gratitude worth giving God thanks. The second and third levels of this great prayer are said with a heaving exhalation of breath, the expulsion of bellows, Thank you. Whoosh. The constables found my passport. The brakes held. The proliferation of white blood cells was about allergies, not leukemia. <coughs> the pediatrician canceled the appointment with the head of oncology and instead recommended Benadryl. Oh my God. Thanks. <coughs> that big whoosh got me. I felt a rush of thank you, thank you, thank you this week. It came in a particular God moment, right when I needed a jolt to wake me up to what really matters, to remind me why I do what I do, and really why we do what we do. I was having a week. I'd been feeling overwhelmed, Coming off of a long weekend and the first phase of our preschool refresh, our stewardship Sunday, and my daughter's birthday, knowing that I had our Thanksgiving service to prepare for, and it seemed like everything in the office was broken. Our server went down. Our phones went out. Even our internet crashed multiple times. Not one time. Not two times. Not three times, four times the internet went out. 
we were understaffed. And while I had my vacation to look forward to, I get on a plane tomorrow. I also knew that meant I had to do twice the amount of work to finish everything before I can leave. So I was working like a crazy woman. And on top of all that, each night after 5 p.m., I had to call in for jury service. I had this foreboding fear that I'd have to stop everything and go sit in a courtroom for hours upon end, crossing my fingers that I didn't actually get stuck on a case while responsibilities piled up at church and home. I was drowning. So as you can imagine, I was kicking myself for agreeing to host the Alzheimer's service on Tuesday. I didn't really have clear expectations of what that agreement had entailed. I thought we were sharing our space, you know, hosting, but not actually doing more than that. Okay, I figured I'd give a welcome, of course. And maybe in the back of my head, I worried that I might have been scheduled to deliver a homily. But Thursday, just a handful of days before the event, I learned that no, actually, we were to create the whole service and host the luncheon afterwards. Well, thankfully, we didn't actually have to bring the food for the luncheon. But all this was for a gathering of people. What do you think, 20 people, 30? 50, they told us to expect a hundred, a hundred Alzheimer's patients, their caregivers, and maybe even their family members. I feared what would happen if my number came up and I had to head to the Santa Ana court that morning. So I called on Monday, but I knew I had to figure something out. And I didn't have childcare early Tuesday morning because my husband was working all night long and he wouldn't come home until 8.30 or 9. So I had a real and legitimate excuse. And the woman told me if that were to occur, I shouldn't come in and call. And they'd probably have to reschedule the whole thing. But at least I knew I wasn't going to go into court. Still, the anxiety of it all, I was definitely juggling but something miraculous happened. God showed up. Along with van after van, shuttle after shuttle arrived, and with them came the Holy Spirit. Connie Jones graciously volunteered to play for the service while Pat set up for the luncheon. And so right on cue, she began a few minutes before the service was to start with the prelude, but all the shuttles hadn't arrived. So she finished that first song and they clapped. So she continued. God bless this woman right there. She played for 20 minutes straight as the group after group slowly shuffled in. They knew the songs. You could tell just by looking at them. This was their big activity, and they were thrilled to be out of their group homes, happy to be in church. Now, there were some who probably had no idea they were in church, but that was okay, too. It's hard to fully describe this for you, but it was nothing less than perfect. When we all sang, great is thy faithfulness, I felt the lump in my throat and the mist, just like now, in my eyes. It was so beautiful. None of us really knew the verses, but all of them belt out the chorus. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by
you, thank you, thank you. That's what it's all about. That's what this is all about. The server problems went away. The broken phone system. The bulletins I needed to finish. The worry about this or that just disappeared. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, God. I needed that. As we approach this holiday, I imagine that you are just as cold as I have been. Worried as we enter into a new holiday season with fears about what COVID will do to ruin our celebrations for the third year in a row. Wondering if all the pledges will come in and how we're going to meet our budget. Curious if all of our family members will show up on Thursday and get along. Can we ever escape politics? And any number of things that are running through your mind. I hope God jolts you. I hope God jolts all of us to remind us of the incredible blessings of our lives, gifting us with the presence of spirit, a smile from a stranger, an old familiar song sung in earnest. There are so many reasons to be grateful. There are so many miracles among us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. As I told first service, my mom says, nobody ever complained about a short sermon. So you're welcome. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, go out into this world with all of its brokenness, its violence and pain, its anxiety producing frustration and heartache. And look for the blessings, the beauty, the love, the miracles among us, and give thanks. Amen.